I have fun doing the gold recovery, but can't always recover gold. Sometimes you have to do the mining too, and this is what I consider mining. I am mining the ore, or the raw materials that I'm going to be extracting from. So this is my mining process, and I figured you'd want to see it. So there you go. Hello, I'm Anthony. This is Bad Idea Metals. I figured uh, I was going to show you kind of a, a day in the life back here. Um, a lot of my videos are very specific. Um, I do a specific thing and I take you along for the ride, but that's not a typical day for me. Otherwise, I'd have a video every single day. So what I've got going on today, I've got some circuit boards that I'm putting through my, uh, my toaster oven to depopulate the boards. Um, while that is going on, I have a box of all these old circuit boards that I'm I'm taking all the plastics off, taking all the steel off. I've got a bin down at my feet for the steel. Um, I've got all the jumpers. I've got certain types of pins. I got some some of the the fingers from like RAM and stuff. And uh, I just I just sort stuff as I go. So as I'm pulling stuff off, if I want to depopulate it, I throw it in in the queue. Got a whole box of things that are the queue, and then it'll go through my toaster oven. And then I dump everything out here and I sort them on, on a little plate that I have. Um, I'll, I'll show you, I'll, I'll get you in a little closer in just a minute. But if you can see it, I don't know if you can, I've got a pot with the circuit board on top. That pot is doing the cooking of our um, IC chips from DDR2 and DDR3 RAM. So that pot over there is actually part of another video which I hope to release here in a little bit, but um, I'm wet ashing some IC chips. So I'm kind of multitasking. Oh, see, components all over the place. We've got stuff falling off the boards. So, no, oh, that was actually a pretty good, uh, a pretty good drop just now. And this board, has most of the stuff off of it. Uh, the rest of the components I'm not interested in. So this is a depopulated board. This gets set off to the side. Let's see if any of these other boards are ready. Sometimes they don't want to give up what they've got. And I have other tools to help me with that. Well, that pin wants to stay on. We'll leave it on for just a sec. Huh. And just like that, that board is depopulated. And you think you're done. Nope, we're gonna start you over. And we're gonna put in a few more boards. Throw a few in at a time. Don't want to overpopulate. I don't want to overfill this, otherwise the boards on the bottom take too long. And then it just burns the the circuit boards. So there we go. Hey, I haven't looked in that pot recently, so I'm gonna go ahead and look in that pot real quick. The sulfuric chokes me, as it should. It is a acid. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and get a safe. It was about 180 degrees Celsius. Pretty good temperature for that. Um, by covering it, it gets up to temp a lot faster. But um, you gotta keep your eye on, uh, on hot sulfuric because it, with the, um, 
with the carbon backings, the black IC chips, it can bubble over. So we're gonna let that keep going. Um, if it gets above 200, and I can see the thermometer from here, if it gets above 200, I'll turn it down because I definitely don't want that bubbling over while I'm on this side of the table. Anyway, let's bring you in closer to what I'm working on here and you can watch. I'll explain some of the fun stuff that I've got and why I'm separating it the way I do. So come on in. Somebody's doing a lot of uh, banging around here in the neighborhood. I'm not sure what. It's not a big deal. Just uh, there's a lot of noise. So I'll do my best to uh, repeat things if I need to. Okay, these circuit boards are going to come out of here about two or 300 degrees. I've got these nice end clippers um, that I can just grab some of these pins with. But uh, I definitely don't want to hold the board with my bare hand or I'm going to be hurting. Just go ahead and clip those. And, uh, and it cuts it right down to the board, which is great. When these are cool enough, I've got a cardboard box that I throw these into. Oh, yep, they're, they're still too hot. So I'm gonna throw these over in my cardboard box. Be right back. Well, this is uh, some old ECC server RAM heat sinks that have some DDR style uh, uh, IC chips glued to the thermal paste. So uh, I was gonna heat these up to try to get them to, to free themselves, but I'm not sure that that'll actually work. I don't see anything in here that's gold bearing. So that goes in my scrap pile. That's going to go in the scrap pile. The pins came out of this. This is a, what looks like an S video port. So draw all of my components together into the light that you can see. That's plastic. Oh, I just heard a, a, a capacitor blow. Let's go ahead and, uh, to get whatever's exploding in here out. You want to keep your eye on stuff. If the plastics melt, ooh, that was a good drop. If the plastics melt, then it gums everything up, like that one right there. Oh, that one's gonna be a gooey mess. Ah, crap. I hate it when it does that. Grab the, uh, MLCCs and I don't see any gold bearing components down inside that that uh, chip receiver so that one's done there's RAM right there I like these pins this is a, a RAID controller from a Dell PowerEdge um, I tried selling it online and nobody bought it, so I tear them apart if nobody wants them. I know I get a lot of a lot of uh, grief from some of my viewers when I destroy something. First off, that that didn't I didn't get everything off of it, so it goes back in the heat. Let's go ahead and close the door so it can keep its heat. But uh, I know I get a lot of grief from some of my viewers for not selling something. I do try. Um, I think I've learned my lesson after that uh, PDP-8 system in January of this year. Um, I got a commenter actually. Uh, it'd be nice if they're a subscriber. I, I got a commenter though um, on, the, on that PDP video saying, you know, I could have gotten a lot of money for, for two of the boards that I destroyed. Yep. I'm still living with a bit of regret. But, you live, you learn. I'd never seen a system like that before. And when I looked online, I didn't see anybody wanting it. So I didn't know. Apparently, uh, I just was unlucky on my timing because uh, there were some, some eBay sales within a few weeks of me destroying some of those components. So, Unfortunately, I just had the wrong timing. 
Okay, these connectors are finally letting go. Mm. All right, so I got this mess of stuff here. I've got another snap, crackle, and pop going on in here. All right. I know, I know, you think you're done. Oh no. These pins have glued themselves to the floor with the plastics. Oh, give me. Okay. So I got a video card here. Some of these components are not ready to come off yet. There's the clock, the oscillator. Mm. Woo! Went flying. Oh. Now these are low grade pins. A lot of them do go flying. Ugh. I like these DVI pins though. Mm. I will have to uh, clip those off, I think. Mm. So that's actually why I bought this end cutter. Is to cut them all the way down to the board. get underneath and you can clip them problem I have with this one is that it doesn't have as much clearance to get some of these components all the way underneath it but it is a wide enough head that usually the wideness of the head makes up for it so because then I just spin it bend it and it's off um, eh, there's really not a whole lot else on here to save there are a few MLCCs, so I'll put it back in just for a little bit. This is my RAM, my DDR1 and older. And so if I've got chips, IC chips that are DD1, DDR1 or older, so basically if they've got legs, they go in here. Now be careful because some of these are still going to be hot, uh, especially if they're copper bearing or if they have steel components. Um, the reason why I'm saving all the... Uh, the DDR1 and older chips in their own bin. Um, I want to process these uh, separately. They're gonna have a, a more reliable gold count than some of these other chips. So I got all these four-sided IC chips. This is a digital um, processor of sorts. Here's a Broadcom, nice big processor. I've got a, got a bucket for these and uh, all other miscellaneous IC chips I throw in there. Now this looks like an IC chip. It's cheating. It's it's all copper. There's copper coils inside. It's basically your network uh, line cleanser. Uh, I don't know what they call it. If you know what it's called, you're welcome to post it. Um, I I don't I don't ever look it up. So, but this guy. You can tell because of how thick he is. He is way too thick to just be a standard chip. So I put this off to the side. It's got copper in it, but uh, let's see. IC chip. I basically take all the ICs out. This is an IC chip, but this is the, the IC BGA that really, it's got this copper heat sink on top and it's no different than uh, this guy. It's a BGA that is useless. So we're gonna set these off to the side. We never use those. I don't do anything with them. I absolutely hate them, so. So this is a 15 pin serial port. Uh, these pins are, they're not gold plated at all, so I'll put them in my scrap. Let's take a look at this uh, 25 port. Serial, uh, it came off the same card, so I expect it to be about the same. Ah, this one's actually gold plated. Yep, so we're gonna save that one. Um, 
This has no pins. Um, my capacitors, um, I throw those in with the scrap. I see, anyway, that's what I do. So, uh, copper components. So, this set of pins, this set of pins, they're the, the square style, um, I call them IDE, even though that's not really what they are. Like, this is a jumper. This is a jumper um, array. I'm not sure what you call it. Anyway, so uh, the jumpers, uh, they're on square pins. And I can hear this sizzling away. So let's go ahead and knock it off. Scrape off these MLCCs, the oscillator on there, the rest of these components. We got some surface mount uh, resistors. They're all good to save. The surface mount resistors, SMDs, um, they've got um, they've got silver in them. So if you're if you're looking for uh, silver. There's a lot of uh, SMDs that we can be using. Now let's go ahead and grab that other guy out. The video card here. We got some MLCCs, some surface mount stuff. A lot of solder will fall. I catch the solder too. And I try my best to get make big globs of solder because the solder will have some silver in it and, uh, and some tin if you're after that. Um, but I like, to, I like to save my solder. I don't reuse it myself, but I do save it. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this off for a minute so I can explain something. Uh, get back to what I was talking about here. So these square shaped pins, I collect all those. I am going to be doing a video when I have a kilogram of these pins and I wanna know how much gold is on the general kilogram of these square pins, the jumper pins, the IDE pins, and I don't mean the IDE ribbons, I mean the IDE motherboard pins. Um, so that's what I'm collecting here. Got my container for my jumpers. Saw a jumper here a second ago. Where are you, jumper? Here's a... DDR2 or DDR3 style RAM. I've got that saved right there. I'm not seeing the jumpers, but I do save the jumpers. I wanna do a kilogram of jumpers. Um, the jumpers, they're little guys, they're plastic guys, and they've got little gold um, connections on the inside. So I save all those um, with the hope that someday I will do a kilogram of the jumper pins and, uh, and we'll, we'll do that. As for everything else, I have a general pins, and this is, this is already about, uh, I think it was two or three kilograms. This is, this is roughly four or five pounds, maybe six pounds of just miscellaneous pins. Um, there's very little plastic, there's no ribbons, there's, there's no jumpers. I did my best to get the square pins out, but this is, this is like your RAM, and some of your coax and some of your video and your serial and other types of pins. Um, and uh, I want to run this when it gets about half full. So um, I want to know how much gold I can get out of, out of, let's just say four kilograms. When this is four kilograms, let's weigh it now. I'll give you an idea how much longer you have to wait before that video gets done. And in all honesty, I'm not super great at doing pins. I've tried it a few times. I've failed a few times. All right, with the bucket, it's 2.3 kilograms. So we're about halfway there. So I predict it's going to be about up here. Um, but when we get about four kilograms of pins, I'll run these. Um, and anybody who can help me out with that, I am, I am looking for success with pins. I have not succeeded with pins yet. Uh, oh, here's a jumper. I knew I saw one. So, miscellaneous pins. Um, I know there are a few videos out there of other people that have succeeded. Um, 
and I appreciate watching all of those. However, when I try to replicate their success, I am far from it. So, anybody who would like to give me some, some pointers, I would love to receive some, some advice on how to succeed with general pins. Anyway, um, when I find a connector, I don't like all the plastic in my bin. So when I find a connector that has easy to extract pins, I do that. I extract them. Let's put our scale away for a second. And I like working on top of this, this plate because I drop stuff all the time. Now there's solder on these pins, so I'm gonna have to pre-process them to get the tin off, to get the solder off. And actually I'm using my wrong pliers for this. So here's my trick that I really like using these round needle nose pliers. You grab the, the subject with the tip and you just roll, well, <laughs> you just roll with your wrist. That one doesn't, that one didn't prove me right. So hold on here. You grab them with the tip and you just roll, roll your wrist and you get all these pins out. It's not always that easy. But uh, a lot of times it is. Uh, it saves, well, it saves me trying to pull. Um, uh, it saves a lot of energy. It's just a torque motion. I, I find it works faster. I break less pins and I don't get tired. I mean, I could do this all day, right? Steve Rogers. Hope that's not trademarked. Maybe it is. <laughs> I may have to scratch that. <laughs> oh, and there you go. I dropped a pin right here into my tray. Recovered. Anyway. Pretty simple stuff. Um, the last thing I want to show you, and then maybe I'll, uh, I'll turn off the video until I find something interesting to show you. But in here, this is a collection of all the extra surface mount stuff. I'll have to extract pins off of these guys. But uh, I've got I've got these gold perimetered oscillators. They're like little clocks, the oscillator chips. Um, I've got these uh, tantalum capacitors. At least I believe these are tantalum capacitors. They've got the, the two connections on the back, and then they've got that rectangular shape. A lot of times they're also kind of a, a yellowish color, like this guy right here, with the two connections on the back. I save those. Here's a surface mount resistor. Save all these. Um, here's a two-pronged oscillator. Save that. So basically, once I have all the RAM separated out, this is a piece of RAM, all the IC chips separated out, and all the pins separated out, I dump everything else out in here to be sorted one more time somewhere else. But I'm looking for the, the SMD res resistors, the MLCCs, which are pretty small. Let's see if I can get a handful of them for you to see. Um, most of these modern ones are magnetic. They're not gonna be as valuable, but and I don't run my own. I don't, I don't process them. But here, here's your MLCCs. They're typically brown. You might find a few that are either an off color green, blue, black. Um, most of the time though, the, those aren't actually MLCCs. Those are actually resistors of different kinds. Um, but these guys, they would, could have palladium in them. They're definitely gonna have nickel. They're gonna have other stuff like silver, but uh, you might be able to get a, a little bit of palladium out of the, these magnetic ones. Most of these modern ones are gonna have um, too much nickel in them. So anyway, I save them. I typically sell them when I have about a pound of them, I sell them on eBay. And that's what I do. Um, so I'm going to continue sorting. And you guys are welcome to watch. Um, I will actually turn off the camera here for a minute 
and uh, multitask between the toaster, the, uh, oh, there's a good pin, the sulfuric, and, uh, and sorting stuff here. Um, but it's just a little bit of busy work. Keeps me a little busy. I have fun doing the gold recovery, but can't always recover gold. Sometimes you have to do the mining too. And this is what I consider mining. I am mining the ore or the raw materials that I'm going to be extracting from. So this is my mining process and I figured you'd want to see it. So there you go. Most fets, um, they're pretty useless. Uh, they are copper based. However, they don't, they don't have enough copper in them to make them worth hunting for. So that's an IC of sorts, but it's so small. Oh, huh. I sometimes get an autopilot. That's a pin. <laughs> I threw a pin in with my other stuff. Ha. Uh, try to catch that. I'm usually pretty attentive. That one's nothing. Okay. So then all the rest of this I consider Oh man. There we go. All the rest of this, I consider general scrap or general components, the small stuff. And so I'll just scoop that up. Oh, and then I find a pin. So we find that and put that over here. Double, triple check. Okay, and we'll put that in there. And now we've got a good surface to work on again for the next batch to fall out. Actually, that's not entirely true. I've got these pins that um, do need to get processed. Pull these pins out. And that's just plastic remaining. All right, so this video is a little bit tough sometimes. Some of these connectors are tough. You have to dive inside, pull off their steel housing. Oh, we got some smoke rising out of the, uh, the, the toaster oven here. Let me hurry and clip these. When you clip, they like to go flying, so oh, we can throw this in our in our box of depopulated boards. And oh, we found a tantalum capacitor. All right, so let's go ahead and go ahead and pull some of this out. Let's see if these are going to let go now. Yeah, they do, but they're messy. But they're letting go. Oh, give to me the thing. Okay. All right. As sticky and gummy as that made my pliers, I got all of those free. <clears throat> okay, well, I spent so much time taking those off that um, unfortunately, nothing's gonna fall off these boards now. <clears throat> these boards cool fast enough that if you don't jump at the opportunity to clean off the, uh, the solder or uh, loosen them from their solder, you, uh, you run into a problem there. Okay, so let's pull over 
I got all these fingers in here, some aluminum, but my BGA RAM goes there. All right, I was trying to explain processing these S video. All right. Oh, pickle. And S video pins break pretty easy. So if I can't get it out on the first try, or if they break, I just chalk it up as a lost pin. Like that one's gonna be a lost pin. So, but you get these really nice gold-ish pins. The S video is actually pretty good. They're plated. They're probably not plated very thickly, but they are usually plated the entire length of the pin. That's pretty nice as far as those pins go. It might make it an, a little bit of a nightmare though, if you think about it, because uh, the pins that are fully plated like that, you may not be able to um, eat the metals out from underneath. So uh, processing fully sublimated pins is a little bit trickier, I think. I don't know. I've never succeeded. All right, so while that's cooking, I will go back to taking this board off. This this board is from a, I believe it was a lab. Nope, this is to a treadmill. It's to a treadmill. Anyway, this is what I do. I sit here and take things apart. I really like taking things apart that I've never taken apart before. Like this, I don't know what's on the other side. I'm excited to see, and you're gonna get to see with me. Huh? Apparently, you're gonna have to wait to see, just like I'm gonna have to wait and see, because, um, it appears that there's more screws to undo. So, I will eventually get to that stuff. Plastic. It looks like there's risers. Boom, but I can smell the smoke. We're going to handle the smoking toaster oven first. Oh, I love it when it's fast and easy like that. Push the tray back in for a sec and wipe off all of our MLCCs and surface mount stuff. Now this is gold plated. So this is not gonna go in my depopped box. Um, the gold plating is enough on both sides that I'm gonna run this like ram fingers. Um, because I've got all the surface mount stuff off, I can do the, well, I got most of it off, but I can run this similar uh, I'd have to put it through some hydrochloric first and then I can have it um, uh, recover the recover the, the gold tabs and the, the gold fingers off. So that's pretty exciting. Grab the other one out. Okay, so those get set. <laughs> those get set off to the side, and uh, let's go ahead and grab something else to throw in here. Oh, what should we put in next? This is a uh, an old sounds card, I think. Yeah, you got your record, your record, your mic, and your line out. Um, this is just an old serial connection. It's a PCI card. Well, at least it was a PCI card before I ripped the fingers off. Another video card, a server. Um, SATA connection. Uh, again, just like the other server stuff that I've already torn apart today. I try to sell things. Things don't always sell. So then I move on. A network card, a NIC, and another network card. So let's go ahead and throw this in there. 
It's got a lot of these square connectors and it's got these SATA connections that I'm interested in. Not a whole lot else. There is some gold flashing. So let's go ahead and throw that one in. And uh, this guy's small, he can fit alongside. And actually so is the network card. Okay, let's button up. Reset our timer. And it's going. This is the queue. We set it up there for the queue. How hot are these? They've cooled down enough. So we'll collect them real fast and throw them in. To our IC chip with legs. Oop, come on. And if I can stay ahead of it, it's just that easy. I can grab my little broom and pick up all these little surface mount components. And uh, I'm already ready for the next, the next depop. So I'm gonna throw these nuts and washers down here. I get so many of them that if I chose to save them, I could probably open a hardware store. <laughs> I probably should. All right. And that's some surface mount stuff that made it to the edge of the table there. All right, surface mount stuff goes in that thing, that container. Perfect. Let's continue trying to break this thing free. So with the risers, we we'll just give them a twist. There's probably a screw right down here. In fact, I'm curious what I'm actually stuck on. These knobs, that's what I'm stuck on. I think, to be honest, that's what makes this the most fun, is going through and looking for why things aren't letting go. So, this is all plastic. We'll throw it in our plastics. The risers. Let's do a quick test on this. I had a magnet out here, there it is. I have a feeling this is aluminum. It is, in fact, aluminum. However, the legs are steel. So um, if I want to sell this as aluminum, I have to break off all the legs. If I want to melt this as aluminum, then I don't have to take the legs off because the forge doesn't usually melt the, the steel when I'm doing aluminum because the aluminum melting point is so much lower than steel. So depends if I want to use this myself or if I want to get some money for it but this is a nice big piece of aluminum. So we'll throw this over with our aluminum to process. Sweet. Okay, so this, there's these, uh, these pins unfortunately are not gold. A lot of times these long pins can be gold, like in network equipment, they usually are. You can see these gold pins here. So off of this board, I like the ICs, I like these gold pins, and there are a few MLCCs, and there's, there's two crystal oscillators, the uh, the clocks. Um, the rest of this, not very useful. So we'll run this, but that's pretty cool. All right, it's cooking away. So as you're doing this, I haven't talked about it today, but I think I talked about it in a previous video. As you're doing this, these cylinders, they can rupture and they vent gas like crazy and you don't want it pointed in your face when they go off they can explode it sounds like a little gunfire or they will um sizzle kind of like um i don't know it just makes a loud venting sound oh, that's not hot enough to come off yet so this is gonna have to go back in but uh just be careful with uh with the capacitors because they will um rupture and vent in your face. Kind of surprises you, that's all. But it could be a hazard for your eyes if you're not wearing glasses. I don't typically, because they don't typically rupture uh, that explosively. 
Ouch. That was hot solder. <laughs> Come on, give to me. Okay, that board's clear. Well, let's get this ceramic capacitor off. Let's get this sound card out of here. Oh, crap. I hate it when the, the plastics melt onto the pins because now I can't recover those pins. Uh, well, whatever. Another board done. Let's go ahead and close this back up. Let that server component finish. Let's throw these over in our box. Um, we can do a little bit of preliminary sorting. So... Another reason why I like having this board is now I can sort out that's that gold. I'd have to double check that one. These don't. That one does. That's a, I'll have to check that. This does not. That does not. That does not. Those will not. Um, that one does. It's cooled down enough that it I probably don't need to use this board anymore. This, these components can stay hot for a long time, so you gotta be careful. We'll check that. This does, that does. Yes, we're keeping that. Um, no. We can start throwing these down now, now that they're cool enough to, to pick up. If it's got a copper winding in it, I have a bin for copper wound components. Look at this. It's not a ton, but uh, it's a good little handful of these square jumper pins that I like, so. This is one, ouch. You can also tell something is copper bearing if it keeps heat for a lot longer than it should. Aluminum will dissipate quickly um, and copper will hold on to that temperature for a very long time in comparison. So if you want to know if something is copper bearing and it's thick like this, ouch, um, you need to uh, consider the fact that it's probably copper bearing. All right. So we'll set that off to the side. These need to have the pins extracted. And the rest of this is going in my, my scrap. Scrap little pieces. There we go. Okay, so now that that's cooled down, throw it in our copper bin. Okay, so I am curious, there it is. I am curious what is inside these components. So we break it open. Okay, so these are going to be standard steel and uh, nickel and whatever else not as valuable all right i'm smelling smoke we're going to pull out what's in here before it catches on fire that's not true it doesn't catch on fire it bubbles black ooze which is nasty stuff we don't want that scrape off these mlccs that one ic chip can you let go yet Nice, that came off. We've got these black connectors. Okay, 
so some of these pins didn't let go. I'm just gonna chomp them with my uh, with my new um, my new end cutter. Okay, let's put another batch in. We're gonna call it quits after this this batch and then the next batch, and we're going to focus the rest of tonight on my icy chips that need to cook because I'm trying to get that done for that video and uh, I already think this video is going to be long enough with the content that I got. Alright, so get our little biters out. We're going to chomp these. Um, I don't see any major components still to take off anymore. Now there's gold flashing on this one, so this is going to join our gold flashing crew. And these have cooled down, these aluminum heat sinks. We're going to throw them into our aluminum bin to sort. Okay, so these can still be hot, so I'm going to touch those later. Let's go ahead and start extracting the pins from these SATA connections. Uh-oh, something sticky on my pliers. Now, there was a video by, I believe, uh, Dyson, I'm going to probably say his name wrong, by uh, Dyson999 out of, uh, I believe, he, he speaks Russian or German? I'm not sure. He, he's in Europe. I love his videos, by the way, but um, he did pins and he did kind of a dry ashing, a fire pit ashing of these pit components. And he basically charred the plastics and then ground them up in, uh, in a process that gave him the pins uh, isolated from all the ashed plastics. Um, I don't like the idea of burning the plastic, but I do like his process on how he how he was able to isolate the pins because this process of taking every single pin painstakingly out this can take me hours whereas you know putting them in a in a pot and letting them cook out oh these are square pins that's nice uh, letting them cook out um it's an interesting concept and int it's intriguing to me. So, okay, I heard something drop. We're gonna pause these for a second. And we're going to pull out what's falling off the boards here. Nice. It's a network card. Very nice. Get the surface mount stuff off. And that board is clean. What about the video card? Oh, I heard that that capacitor pop. Can you hear it? Anyway, when the capacitors burst, they get really angry. A lot of times for me, they burst inside the toaster, so. Now, video cards are kind of a hit or miss for first try. A lot of times I gotta put them back in. All right. Useless IC chip. Uh, that's gonna go down there. Square component. Not too hot, okay. Let's go chase after this other card that's in here. Let's see if we can get some components to drop off a bit. Oh, there's a lot of components that dropped off already. You see the solder bounce out of those little holes? That'll jump up and get you in the hands. Promise that, right there. Got me a few times already tonight. Whoa, that thing went fine. Okay, that one's done. Let's uh, go ahead and empty out our tray. Put you back on. Put you back in. We might as well throw this on. There's room for it. 
Okay. Okay, well that's gonna be hot for a while. So we can continue taking pins off of these and then we'll be done for the night. So this, these style pins, they're only gonna be gold plated on one side. It's kind of like RAM. RAM is that way. Some of those expansion cards. All right. What do we have in these pin slots? Oh, they're also gold plated. Gold plated. I'll start moving some of them over. That's a squared one. That's a squared one. I'm about to lose my light back here, so uh, most of my reasoning for... Whew, that's still hot. <laughs> um, most of my reasoning for wanting to get done quick and be done after this batch is because uh, I'm going to lose my light. And you're not going to be able to see anything of what I'm doing back here. So that's going to be copper bearing. That's going to be hot. They're too hot to put in my plastic bins or I'm going to melt my bins. So won't put those in quite yet. So network stuff. There, there's usually eight pins inside of an RJ45 connector. This is your standard network. Modems, you don't really find modems much anymore. Modems are RJ11 ports, and they will have at most four pins. I guess I've seen a, a port that had six, but I would expect that not to be called an RJ11. So this is an RJ45, and it's got eight pins. Let me see if I can quickly get some of these pins out for you. They're going to be sharp in all sorts of directions, so... No, it's dropping more stuff. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this out, though. Oh, you hear that? It's giving me my stuff. I am not totally recovered from my injury. Oh, I'm trying to hurry and beat the boards getting burned. We'll come back to this RJ45 in just a minute. So you can hear the components falling off this board. Oh, and they're plastic. I don't want them to melt in there. Makes a mess out of my tray. Okay, well, this is gonna go back in for a minute. But let's go ahead and recover all that plastic before it makes a mess and melts itself. There we go. Let's see if anything else will come off our video card. Hey, the RAM's coming off. The oscillator is off. Oh, nice. Everybody must go. It's 100% sale. Everything's got to go. Sorry, I'm being silly. And I'm not scripted at all, so I apologize if my jokes are annoying. There we go. That's a cleaned off video card. And there's one service mount piece. Pretty clear. That goes down there. Let's flip that over. I like to put it solder side up because that puts the solder closer to the heating element. I typically use the broil setting and that broil setting um, heats from the top down. So that's, that's pretty nice. Okay, so I was trying to extract this pin without breaking it. There we go. Let's see if I can show you in here. This pin, let's see if I can find something dark by contrast. Huh, my shirt maybe? That pin is, is all yellow. This is a network pin out of an RJ45. I just dropped it somewhere. There it is. So there's the RJ45 connector. It's going to have eight of these pins. 
and uh, they're round and they are usually sublimated from the tip at least to a certain point, maybe not all the way down to its solder points on the motherboard or wherever it is, but it's gonna be plated really well. So I like network stuff. Um, and uh, I just add it with the rest of the pins. I don't have enough network stuff to, to do its own video. So it's just gonna go in with all the stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's the RJ45, pretty exciting there. Okay, well, there's really not a whole lot else. These have little metal pins, little clips on the inside, so I'll put them in with my general metals. I do want to see what's inside this number, this number pad. I doubt there's going to be anything of any value in here. <laughs> I had a receiving pin uh, coupler, a little uh, extension. Those aren't gold, are they? No. Nothing fancy in there. I would imagine that there's nothing super fancy inside this number, digital number or analog number piece. So let's crush this real fast. Well, it's not just gonna crush. Sorry, chomps. You're not going to be strong enough to do that. Give this a twist. Oh, it's just a mess of plastic and some epoxy, it looks like. It probably has a diode in there, or a series of diodes. Diodes can have gold, but they don't usually. This one doesn't look... This one doesn't look like it does. So we're going to throw it down with the rest of the scrap steel and tin and stuff that we're not gonna deal with. And all that did is add debris to clutter up my work area down here. Dang it. I do try to keep the foreign stuff, like garbage, plastics, and things like that off. That way, I don't have to sort through it later. But, it's what it is. Okay, last element, hope, the last elements. Uh-oh, they're melting, they're melting to the, thing out out oh crap i may have got it early enough good enough oh i hate when all of this black is a mix of plastics from components like like these or they could be uh the black is also um from um the the Ouch, that was hot. Like I said, these boards are hot. Um, or it's the black goo that comes off these boards when they get over overcooked. So, I'm getting all the surface mount stuff off. I'm not sure what these are. There's nothing fancy about them. Huh. I actually like the design on this board. I'm gonna save this board for fun. It's a nice big rectangle. And uh, that's the last item coming out. We have nothing else to put in. We're gonna turn you off. Oh, let's see, there it is. The one pin that wouldn't come off. There you go. I think I'm gonna save that board. There you go. Anyway. I'll sort the rest of this uh, probably tomorrow. I've lost enough light that these small things are all starting to blend together as plastics and solder and small surface mount components. The larger things, I can definitely sort them, but some of them are too hot to sort right now. By the time I let it cool, I might lose almost all my light. So that's where we're at. So let's go ahead and close. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a long video. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like a sidecar video, or you're going to, you're going to be along for the ride. I apologize if it is too long, but, uh, most of my viewers don't watch the entire video anyway. So you're going to skip to what's interesting and, uh, you're going to watch what you like. So I hope there was something in this video that was entertaining to you. And, uh, that's where we're at. Um, I turned off the 
power to my sulfuric. It was just too much going on at once. Um, if I wasn't narrating a video, I wouldn't be as distracted and I didn't want to let that run away from me. So I turned that one off. I'll turn it back on here in a little bit and probably just read a book or play a video game on my phone as I watch that thing uh, simmer away for a little while. But uh, yeah, a lot going on back here. But thanks for watching.